With the Advantech subfloor assembly, you can be sure that you're building a reputation on something stronger. And the best builders, well, they may always stand apart, but they never stand alone. So ask yourself, are you bringing your A-game? Hey everybody, welcome back to Before the Build series. Yeah, this is the series where we get to talk about everything we thought about before we build. So, as I said in the last one, hopefully you enjoyed that. We started talking about the uh, board form concrete pier footings. But today, we're going to jump in and we are going to talk about the basement footing and the detail down at the basement slab and the transition up to the foundation wall. So got the details ready, got big red ready. So let's dive in and talk about basement footings. All right, so threw down the building section here right quick because I just want to make reference to where we're talking. The uh, Basement footing detail we're going to talk about is that one right there, where the slab meets the footing meets the wall, and it again reoccurs over here. So that's where we're talking. So let's check out that detail. Let's register that right quick. All right. So there you have it. Footing detail. You can see the outline of the footing here. A lot of things happening here. Bring this out. Bring this down. I'm going to call it the footing detail, but it's basically the whole footing slab arrangement detail here. So, first thing, the footing itself. You can see there's a little keyway in it. The footing is 10 inches. In this case here, it's 30 inches. It goes up to a 10 inch wall. And you can see we have some reinforcing bars that come down and come across there. Those are number four bars and they're bent so that we get a 12 inch leg there and about a 24 inch vertical leg. Um, the other thing to note inside the footing, you'll see we have three number four bars that are fully spaced across there. Remember, concrete does really, really good in compression, meaning anything that I push down here, it does very, very well. What concrete doesn't do very well is bend, because it doesn't. It snaps. It's got no, what we would call, tensile strength. It has compressive strength. So we can bear down on it all day long We try to bend it. We need help. And that's why we put these bars in there because they help with the bending or the attempt to bend that footing and keep it straight. Notice that we also have some reinforcing bars in the wall. Typically we have one at the bottom of the wall, one at the uh, mid height of the wall. And those happen, you know, that's our typical wall foundation detail. On the outside here, you see we have, we call it a drainable dimple mat. So that runs along the outside of our footing there with a waterproofing underneath it that gets directly uh, uh, applied to the uh, foundation wall. So that dimple mat, well, that's nothing more than what it says, right? It looks like that. And the reason for the dimples are, so you have spaces there for the water to fall to gravity. Get down, notice that we have a stone bed there that gets wrapped in filter fabric. We have a pipe there so we can take care of our water and that gets drained to daylight. We saw that in the foundation plan. You can see here we have an internal drain also and that gets drain to daylight. 
As we move into the inside of the wall, you'll see here we have two layers of insulation. Rigid, we do two layers because the top layer runs over the top of the footing. And then we have a piece that goes at the perimeter of the footing, and then we have our insulation that runs up the wall. So you can see there we maintain really good thermal continuity, and then it expands there. But the important thing that I've always said, continuity is key. All right, we want to make sure we run that right around the slab and up the foundation wall. That isolates that slab and puts it inside the room so that it stays a lot warmer than touching the ground or touching the foundation. Remember, down here, ground temp, you know, let's just say 55 degrees. We operate this, let's say 72 degrees. That's a 17 degree delta. Now we're trying to keep the heat here from migrating into the ground. We don't want that. Remember, heat moves from warm to cold, always. Cold doesn't come in. Heat moves, not cold. Um, and then here, of course, because we have the space and it's directly attached to the house, we have our two by four wall. We had some bad insulation in that wall. And then of course, our drywall there to protect the flammability of the rigid foam and the wood frame. It's minor protection, but it is required um, depending on what type of insulation you use on that foundation wall. So, but anyways, control layers, you can see we've dealt with water, with our waterproofing and dimple mat. Air tightness, well, it's concrete. If you don't believe me that it's an air barrier, then go put your lips up against the concrete wall and blow. Good luck. Um, vapor, we have the rigid insulation there. Um, most likely that is something of a very less permeable um, situation. So this is going to dry to the inside. And any moisture that accumulates here is going to dry back out to the ground. So everything that's the most restrictive portion of the wall. So we're either drying to the inside or drying back out to the ground there. I don't think that is going to get really situated. The, the beauty of building hilltop on a hilltop aero project is that the top of the hill doesn't have a lot of groundwater in it. It was pretty dry. So water management, vapor management, it's pretty easy. The thermal management, rigid insulation underneath, run over the top of the footing, encapsulate the end of the slab, continue it up the wall, add some additional unfaced bat insulation in the wall, and we complete it. Voila, there's the footing detail. So stay tuned. We got some cool pictures from construction. So enjoy the slideshow.